Ba 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 shi ba ba o o shi ba ba. What is a hero? This is the question that has perplexed many historians throughout history. Some believe that the hero is a representation of a particular culture. Others, such as an English historian of religion, E. O. James, believe that the themes of hero myths lie outside the range of savage mentality and are, in fact, the product of a long process of development and transformation. We have many heroes in our lives. Baseball players, soldiers, politicians. Okay, probably not politicians. And even comic book characters that save the world time and time again. Waha! We love a hero. But heroes are not unique to our culture, nor to any culture in history. In fact, in many cases, the hero is a symbol of the noble roots of a particular civilization. The Athenians did as much with their hero, the great, the noble, the yawn-toting Theseus. The story of Theseus is long and complicated, but truly one of the most exciting hero myths in all of classical mythology. Theseus grows from a young boy to be the king of Athens, arguably the most culturally powerful city in the ancient Greek civilization. However, this path is not easy and he must make great bounds and defeat deadly monsters to make it there in one piece. It is the Bronze Age of ancient Greece, a peak of the early part of this Greek civilization, and Greece is divided into many powerful city-state kingdoms. Among these are the great cities of Pylos, Sparta, Mycenae, and Athens. The great city of Athens was still growing at this time, but looked promising. The Greeks had rivals to the south on the island of Crete, where King Minos ruled the Minoan civilization at the beautiful city of Knossos. Minos, a powerful and clever man, had rivals to the throne, so he asked the gods to help him by giving him a sign of his divine right of kingship. Oh, Poseidon, he said, I want to be a king, but there is another man that is challenging me to the throne. Please be a good help and give me some sign of your approval of me as king. Send me a, um, uh, a bull. Yes, a bull. A bull from the water and I will sacrifice it back to you. Poseidon considered this and after a while he figured, Oh, what of it? and sent Minos his bull from the sea. Minos was amazed and decided to keep the bull, but this angered Poseidon. Minos used the bull to become the most powerful man in Crete, and he built up the power of the Minoans to challenge the Greeks. Thucydides, the great Greek historian, recalls the tradition that Minos was the first person to organize a navy. He controlled the greater part of what is now called the Aegean Sea. But don't you worry, Poseidon remembered his lie. In order to punish Minos for his disobedience and lack of pious devotion to the gods, Poseidon made the bull wild and further, he aroused a wicked desire for the bull in Minos' own wife, Pasiphae. In order for her to, you know, she turned to the great engineer Daedalus, who constructed a wooden cow, and taking it to the field where the bull grazed, he instructed Pasiphae to get inside it. The bull and Pasiphae, well, you know, and she bore a son, whom she named Asterius. Asterius was a hideous lad, with the head of a bull, the body of a man, and the temper of a demon. He became known as the Minotaur, and because of his uncontrollable rage, he was shot in the labyrinth created by Daedalus to hold him. Well, this is all well and good, but I fail to see how the hero figures into this story. 
This is where Theseus comes in. You see, the Athenians are a very competitive sort, and when they were completely beaten in the games by Minos' son Androgeus, they attacked and killed him, quite to the dismay of Aegeus, the king of Athens. When Minos caught wind of this, he attacked Athens to avenge his son and defeated the Athenians. Experiencing a most dreadful famine, the Athenians were told that if they appeased Minos, they would be spared the gods' wrath. So when Minos demanded that seven maidens and seven young men be sent to Crete each year, the Athenians reluctantly accepted. Each year, the hostages sent to Crete were put into the labyrinth, where they were either devoured by the flesh-eating Minotaur or forced to commit suicide after realizing that they could not find a way out of the labyrinth. Theseus, who had just recently learned of his noble blood, returned the sword of his father from under a rather nasty and heavy rock, proving himself worthy to his father and to Athens. Greetings, son. I bring you the sword. Rise. Theseus, in his brave and rash young self, knew that he must help his kingdom to stop the sacrificial offerings, and insisted to be one of the young men sent to Crete on the next voyage. I will go. How can you go? So after convincing his father Aegeus to let him prove his courage further by defeating the Minotaur of Knossos, he made preparations to sail for Crete. Aegeus asked that Theseus fly white sails if he was victorious, but black sails if he had died in the labyrinth. When Theseus arrived in Crete, he met Ariadne, daughter of Minos, who immediately fell in love with the young hero. Fearing for his safety, she gave him a sword with which to fight the Minotaur, and a ball of yarn to find his way through the maze. After receiving these gifts with awe, Theseus entered the labyrinth. Using the yarn given by Ariadne, Theseus journeyed through the labyrinth. He could hear the ferocious grunts and hideous breathing from the Minotaur, but kept his courage. Upon coming to one part of the maze, the companions screamed and were eaten by the Minotaur. Theseus, though shaken, continued through the labyrinth. Suddenly, entering one of the corridors, Theseus discovered the Minotaur. <laughs> Having killed the beast and won victory for Athens, Theseus sailed back with Ariadne to his home. However, Theseus was annoyed with Ariadne and dumped her on the island of Naxos. Ariadne was understandably upset, but the god Dionysus came down and took her for his wife. So everything turned out okay for her in the end. Theseus was so excited to return home that he forgot to change the sails to white. Aegeus, upon seeing the black sails, jumped to his death. Well, that's a very interesting story, but we don't often encounter minotaurs on our way to work. What does this have to do with us? Let's now talk to Joseph Campbell, a world expert on myth, to examine the story. Hi, I'm Bill Moyers. Before his death in 1997, I had a chance to conduct a series of interviews with the legendary Joseph Campbell. One such interview occurred at the Skywalker Ranch, so that George Lucas could shamelessly promote his Star Wars films. First, I'd like to thank you for th these interviews. Oh, whatever. 
Uh, okay. Uh, can you discuss the importance of heroes? Heroes have quite an influence on society. Um, heroes like uh, Gumby, Mama Cats, Alf, uh, George Lucas, and Theseus, they all have an influence on our lives, um, on our own heroic journeys. Gumby? I like claymation. Oh. Theseus, for example, is a great figure in classical mythology. When he brings a string into the labyrinth, you can tell that he's, he's got something. What's that? He's holding on to his society, his culture. You can see how he's dependent on custom and tradition and how the culture depends on him. We need heroes. And the impact on myth? Well, myth is dependent on some event or tradition. We are myth, you know. Yeah, we, we are myth, but, but we certainly can never become myth. It's the same with heroes. Myths can never become heroes, but heroes are myths. What? Um, I, I have no idea. Well, it's time for our shameless Star Wars plug. Can you think of any parallels that we can draw out and over-exaggerate? Uh, one of my favorite characters is, is Jabba the Hutt, you know. He's a rather disgusting, vile creature. <laughs> So is the Minotaur, so is the Minotaur, you know, both of their evil and figurative enslavement, you know, are eventually, they're eventually slaughtered by the heroes. Uh, George Lucas, he was just brilliant in his casting of Leia. He certainly was. And so too with uh, Theseus. Uh, Theseus goes into the labyrinth and he's immediately changed uh, forever. It's, it's similar to Benny the Jet, you know the movie The Sandlot? Well, as soon as he, he pickled the beast. A modern day minotaur? Precisely, precisely. And just as Theseus was changed when he entered the labyrinth, Benny was changed as soon as he entered the beast's yard. They both went on to greatness. Definitely. Well, thank you for your time, Joseph. You're very welcome, Bill. I'm, I'm so glad you could have me here at the Skywalker Ranch and, you know, the Star Wars films, they're amazing. So, like, just spend a lot of money on the Star Wars films. So as you can see, Theseus is a wonderful example of the hero. His courage and valor are prime examples for us in the world today. I hope you'll join me next time when we explore more in the world of mythology. Racing